Hi, my name is Mayra. Welcome to Art and Travel. So in this video, Roger is working, but I'm gonna give you a, a travel guide to Key West. I'm also gonna uh, give you recommendations of places to stop along the way. We actually visited Key West twice, once in the winter when we were living in our little home on wheels. And we also visited in summer, and recently we just snorkel in Key Largo. So yeah, let's get started. I recommend you to make a quick stop is in Bahia Honda Key. So uh, you pay eight dollars per vehicle. Uh, we recommend you to go there in uh, a day that the ocean is looking its best. I'm gonna leave you here their phone number so you can call them in advance. One thing uh, to know about the ocean or the beaches here in South Florida. Now that we live here, we uh, know how this is, how different the ocean can look in, from one day to the next. If there's a lot of sargassum, the seaweed, the ocean is going to look completely different, like a totally different place. So your experience is not going to be the same. I really enjoy when the ocean is clean, when the water is super calm and crystal clear. So if you're like me, give them a call before you go there, so you, that way you don't get surprises. Anyway. The day we visited, it was a beautiful day, the water was calm and we did a, this little walk towards the bridge and you get to see the view of the ocean and it was perfect. We actually spent a whole day here when we visited. It was winter at the time but the weather was perfect. Uh, I actually got to practice my swimming skills. The water is really shallow so this beach is perfect if you have children. Um, also, if you're a beginner in swimming, like myself, uh, we spend the whole day here. They do have showers and you are able to camp. Uh, it's just like the other state park. Uh, it's really hard to secure a place. You have to do it way in advance. The website is the same. I'm going to leave it here again. You just need to write or type the, the name of the place. In this case, is Bahia Honda. So another highlight and very unique. Uh, to the area is to drive through the seven mile over the water bridge. It's beautiful, especially if you get a sunny day, you're gonna see how blue the water is and it's just really beautiful. We uh, driven when it was uh, a forecast and when it's sunny, when it's sunny, you get the best views. It's beautiful. You're also gonna see driving along the way the old seven mile bridge there. Uh, actually, Roger and I were planning to go back there and do like an uh, early run there. Anyway, so that's uh, you're gonna have to drive through it because that's the only way to get to uh, Key West. So, uh, hopefully, when you visit, it's a sunny day because that is when it looks the best. All right, so another location I recommend you to make a quick stop is in Blue Hole. So this one, this blue hole is very unique because it's fresh water on top of salt water that is very unique to this hole. And um, I know it's a big, uh, it's a highlight to see alligators in South Florida and there's actually two alligators in this blue hole, but you can uh, see them from a safe viewpoint. You don't have to risk your life just to see these alligators. You can actually see them from a very safe area. So I recommend you to make a quick stop because it is along the way to, uh, on, towards Key West. And also you can do like a quick uh, walk, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, depends on your speed. It's a free location to, uh, to stop, so I recommend it. And only five minutes from this blue hole, you can find the National uh, Key Deer Refuge. So here, uh, I recommend you to make a quick stop if you wanna see deers in person. So we actually drove there, we parked the car for a little bit and then we seen some deers. Don't feed the deers, it's not good for them. So yeah, if, uh, if you're like me, if you wanna see deers in person, this is a perfect place to see some. They're actually unique to the area. You will notice that they're very small, they're not babies, that's actually how they are. Anyway, so I recommend you, uh, to make a quick stop here as well. So we also made a quick stop in uh, Marathon in uh, Coco Plum Beach. 
The day we visited, it was forecast and there was a lot of uh, seaweed, a lot of sargassum. So this is just an example of what I was uh, telling you about how different it could be. Uh, like from Bahia Honda, that was uh, uh, two days before and then three days later, the beach is looking completely different. So it really makes a difference uh, when you visit the uh, Key West on uh, the weather. So if you have, if you want, if you're looking for uh, the experience we had in Bahia Honda, definitely you need to look at the forecast. If it's raining and if there's a lot of seaweed, this is how the beach is gonna look. All right, so once you are in Key West, I recommend you to go to the Fort Zachary Taylor uh, Historic State Park. So this fort is actually was significant in the Civil War and also the Spanish-American War. You're gonna have, uh, it's eight dollars per vehicle, you're gonna have somebody to give you a tour of the area and you're gonna learn about the historical events that happened in this location. I think it's very interesting to see them in person. You're gonna see some of the artifacts left behind or what they used to use this fort for. You're uh, also able to go on the top, see a view from the top, but I think it's a very interesting location. After you do that, or after we did this, um, at the time we visited in our, our little home on wheels, so we had it there, we were able to cook in there. Uh, but another highlight is that they have a beach, and like I said, if you get a beautiful day, it's a perfect beach to take a swim. Uh, we uh, had a great time, we actually spent a whole day in this um, state park. We had our hammock and we stayed here until sunset. And another highlight in the Florida Keys is to watch one of these beautiful sunsets. So that's what we did in this beach. I recommend it uh, for you if you want to have like a beach day uh, with a historical location in sight and then uh, you get to see this beautiful sunset. All right, so in Key West, another highlight of Key West is to go to the southernmost point buoy, which is 90 miles from uh, Cuba. This is one of the main highlights in Key West. You drive there, you get to see the area. Uh, it's very uh, popular, so you, you're gonna find uh, lines to take the one picture here. I think it's worth it just because it's just very interesting to know that, oh my god, I'm only 90 miles uh, from Cuba, so it's very uh, interesting and I think it's worth it even though there is lines to take the picture I think it's still worth it we didn't go to Cuba but we ended up going to the Cuban coffee queen I'm gonna leave you the address here I think it's worth it to go get a Cuban coffee uh, so it was really good and uh, the time we visited we seen roosters outside so I think it's worth uh, making a quick stop here this coffee place is next to the marina, so I recommend you to walk around the area. Uh, we actually had like a quarter and we you can feed the fishes in the marina. So that's something else that you can do, or if you have children, I think it's really fun for them as well. You can see some of the fishes in the marina. And yeah, it's just steps from there. All right, so a famous street to uh, walk around here in uh, Key West is Duval Street. So in this street, you're gonna find a restaurants, a stores for souvenirs, and it's just really fun to walk around the street. Also, you're gonna see a lot of uh, chickens and roosters roaming around. That is actually something very unique to Key West that you're gonna see uh, a lot of chickens and roosters. I uh, was raised on the countryside, so I love the fact that you see chickens and roosters everywhere, I actually enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, so I recommend you to walk around on Duval Street. If you're a fan of Ernest Hemingway, they actually have one of his homes here, it's now a museum. You're able to go inside, they charge $16 per person. We just passed by because we were in a hurry, but I wanted to provide that info for you, for if you're a fan. And only one minute walk from Ernest Hemingway Museum home, you can find the uh, lighthouse here in Key West and the keeper's quarters. You have the option to just pass by, take some pictures and just see the lighthouse from afar. Uh, also, you can pay to go inside, it's uh, $12 per person, so it's up to you.
Another uh, simple but unique location here in Key West is that you're gonna find the end of the US 101, which is mile zero. And across the street is the beginning of 101 mile zero. So I recommend you to go there, uh, take a quick picture or just knowing, I think it's very interesting just to know like, my God, this is the beginning and the end of the US 101, especially if you've driven in the 101. And um, I think it's worth it because only uh, a uh, like a few minutes from there you can walk to the famous tree in Key West which is the Kapop tree uh, I think it's worth it uh, Roger and I we just walk around the area we took a few pictures so yeah just write it down another beach I recommend you to make a quick stop is the Smothers Beach as I mentioned before it, the beaches changes depending uh, if they have seaweed, the sargassum or not. The day we visited, it wasn't the best day. Uh, so hopefully when you visit, it's one of those beautiful days because I've seen pictures when it's clean and it looks stunning, worth uh, the stop. Anyway, so um, I just wanted to give you the name just in case that when you visit, it's really nice. It has sand, so it's perfect for sunbathing. If you love animals like we do, we recommend you to make a quick stop at the Key West Wildlife Center. So in this location, they actually help wounded animals and then they release them uh, to their wild habitat, to their habitat. So yeah, so we just made a quick stop. We actually got to meet the oldest rooster ever. <laughs> he was really big and I was able to hold him. Uh, so that was nice. You also get to see other animals depending on uh, the animals that they're helping at the time that they're wounded. So I, for us, it was worth it. I love animals, especially those places that are helping them and then they get to be released on their uh, habitat. So yeah. We recommend you to make a quick stop is in Key Largo and that is the John Pennycamp Coral Reef State Park. So we recently went there for, uh, especially to snorkel and I highly recommend you to do so. So one really important and fascinating fact about the Florida Keys is that it is part of the only living uh, coral reef formations in the continental United States. So it's kind of a big deal to be able to snorkel here. So we went there on a really nice day. Visibility was perfect. The water was really clear. Um, so we were able to snorkel here uh, and we were able to see the living uh, reef formations. Uh, the trip is for two hours and a half, but it feels so short while you're snorkeling because you just want to stay there and see more. And at the time we visited, there was a little bit of a current, so it was hard like to swim and uh, do it faster. Uh, and I'm also a beginner swimmer, so that was a little harder for me. Anyway, so uh, the waters here are actually turquoise blue waters, really beautiful. Uh, for some reason, every time I see those colors, it just makes my day, especially because we went on a sunny day. It just looked beautiful even from the top of the boat and it's just amazing. So um, I recommend you to do this snorkeling. They charge uh, $37 per person. You do need to book online. I'm gonna leave you the website here so you can book your trip. They actually have different times during the day. Uh, they get booked pretty fast. I actually, we wanted to do it in the morning because we know in the morning that's when the turtles are having their breakfast and that's when you're most likely to see turtles. We have snorkel in other countries so we kind of remember this but it was already late. We booked at 2.30 so I recommend you to do it as early as possible. Uh, and also um, before going there, I would recommend to call them to ask about the forecast for the day that you're gonna visit. Uh, that's what I did and when we visited, like I said before, visibility was great. Uh, the water temperature right now is the spring. It was about 78 degrees, so for me it was perfect. Roger says that it's still a little bit cold for him, but he is used to the summer waters, which is 86, super warm. 
Anyway, um, so we were able to see some fishes, but I think for me the highlight was uh, to see those uh, reefs. Uh, also, especially now, because one of my treatments, I did a stem cell uh, transplant. I'm a cancer survivor and one of my treatments actually was uh, invented using some mollusk from the ocean. So I feel more connected than any other time in my life with the ocean and uh, for that reason I highly recommend you to use Reef uh, Safe Sunscreen if you are sensitive to the sun as I am I am super sensitive after my transplant even more I recommend you to use long sleeve uh, bathing suit and also uh, remember to use reef safe sunscreen they actually have a little uh, a little store here when you pay you book online but you pay in person so when you pay there's a little store and they send little packages uh, of reef safe sunscreen so please use that let's protect our reef um, other recommendations is uh, if you want to camp you are able to camp in here however it gets booked pretty fast we haven't been able to secure a spot yet so you do have to uh, plan in advance for camping uh, i will leave you the website for the camping because it's a different website from the one that you book your snorkeling trip so the website for camping will be right here another recommendation is that if you easily get seasickness to come prepare uh, I was surprised I didn't because I didn't even have my nausea pills with me. However, I was, they tell you on the boat, you know, just there like uh, on the distance or something and you're not going to get seasickness. Uh, that's what I did. I didn't get anything. But if you are easily uh, getting seasickness, it's better to come prepare. So for this park, they charge $8 per vehicle. And if you need to rent the snorkeling gear, they're going to charge you per each item we already had ours so we didn't have to pay for that and we actually forgot our fins in the car so you do i highly recommend you to um rent the fins because when you are snorkeling on deeper ocean water it makes a big difference we actually regret not taking ours uh with us in the boat we were in a hurry and we forgot so you go prepare better than us and your experience is going to be even better also they you do need to use the life vest at all times you have the option to inflate it or not just to have it there at, in case of an emergency i'm a beginner swimmer so i felt more comfortable having it inflated a little bit roger just use it uh, as a an emergency just in case because everyone needs to use that uh, so yeah, I highly recommend you to do this snorkeling um, So when you visit they don't assure you that they will take you to the famous Christ of the Avis that all depends if it's Perfect weather. So it's all about the weather when it comes to the snorkeling So once again call them prior your visit just to find out a little bit about the forecast when you are gonna visit uh, but yes, it was a highlight, a highlight for us to do the snorkeling here. However, if the snorkeling is not for you, you are able to kayak in these amazing mangroves. I don't know if you know some of the things that these mangroves do to the ecosystem. I didn't know anything about those mangroves before. So I just want to give you some quick facts just to make it super interesting in your kayaks. So these mangroves uh, act as a coastal defense against floods because they absorb water. They also can help mitigate coral bleaching and they protect the water quality by removing pollutants. So those trees, they just look so innocent in there on the shallow water, salty waters, but they do amazing things. So you are able to kayak here and uh, Roger and I, we were walking around the park and we actually seen a nursing shark while we were walking. So that was another highlight <laughs> to be there. On our, the first time we visited, we didn't do the snorkel. We just uh, walk in the waters. So uh, I know a lot of people get surprised when they come to the Keys and they don't see these long sandy beaches, but that's not as common here in the Keys. 
so just be prepared however sometimes you do get these really clear waters that you can still bathe on them summer is the warmest uh, right now, like I said, it's about 78 degrees. For me, it was fine. Roger says it's a little bit cold still, but he's used to the summer, the 86. That's like a shower, pretty much. Anyway, uh, I really hope I convince you to visit this state park. If you're gonna spend more than one day in Key West, there are a lot of options for you to stay. Uh, summer prices are higher than any other season because it's the most popular here in Key West. Um, if you are in a van, a little home on wheels like uh, we were, it's actually harder to find places here to stay overnight. We did use the iOverlander app to see what other travelers um, would recommend. Uh, we were in our van in winter, so I think it was a little bit easier compared to summer. Uh, and here, there's a lot of places where you cannot park overnight. You get tickets. So just keep that in mind when you're planning your visit. Um, and uh, for camping, you do need to plan ahead, like I'm talking about months, in order for you to secure a place and be able to camp. I think it's worth it. We're still trying to uh, secure a place on one of these amazing locations. But yeah, I just needed to provide that information for you so you better plan your trip to Key West. So when is the best time to visit uh, Key West in the Florida Keys? So it's the same thing as visiting Miami. We do have a travel guide for Miami. So the hurricane season is from June 1st to June 30th. With that said, that is when the water is the warmest. I love that about that time, but it is the hurricane season. Uh, sometimes we get tropical storms and that also changes because if it's a tropical storm it rains the whole day so you don't have beach days during that time so just uh, always keep an eye on the weather so you better plan your trip to South Florida to Key West um, also I left you those numbers so call them just to see uh, what the weather forecast is gonna be for the time you visit uh, spring is also a great time to visit the water is not as warm but we don't get a lot of visitors and prices are uh, a little bit less winter uh, we uh, the water is the coldest that is not my favorite time however if you're coming from like snow states then for you it's a complete summer <laughs> compared to the snow it's really up to you um, let me know if you have any questions and yeah that's it for this guide i'll see you in the next video take care subscribe if you like to travel uh, or if you want to watch more travel guides we have more see you in the next video Bye bye